is your host, Benjamin Saxton, and welcome to a Fighter's Chance podcast, where we give people in the combat sports world an opportunity to talk about the things worth fighting for. Today's guest is an outstanding wrestler, placed first in the Midland University Lady Warrior Open, placed first in the WCWA Women's Collegiate National Champion, placed first in the German Grand Prix Open at 73 kilograms, full-time resident at the Olympic Training Center, Diamond Guilford. How are you doing today? I am doing so fine. Thank you for having me today. Absolutely. I'm, I'm excited to talk to you. There's a lot of uh, really interesting things going on in women's wrestling and wrestling in general. Um, you know, your story's pretty cool. You started later in life. You know, I, I talked to a lot of athletes that have been doing it since they've been, you know, six, six years old earlier on. And you, you fell in love with wrestling, what, your junior year in, junior oh, yeah. year in high school? Okay, so that's, that's wild. Did you have any experience wrestling, like, other than just maybe around the house or something with your uh, large family? So, my brothers are, like, at least two to five years older than me, the ones that I did live with, and they roughhoused with me a whole bunch. It was crazy and hectic, and they always pushed me to do a lot of sports growing up as well. So, the athletic component always been in my heart. It's just that didn't know wrestling was a thing until I found out, and it took me away. That's pretty cool. And you did other sports though, right? You, you did yeah. basketball. Okay. So you were, you were athletic. It wasn't like you just found athletics at your junior. Oh yeah. What was, was, um, sorry. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I did volleyball, track, basketball, uh, soccer, just about anything that really got me out of the house after school and even stuff like cheerleading. I did cheerleading for like nine years before I even thought about wrestling. And then my sister introduced me to, oh, we have a women's wrestling team at our school. We should try out. We should do this. And I was like, okay, I'm down for anything. And it just took off from there. It started off as a hobby. And then when I start, started to see the success, when I got to meet new people from around California, it, it took a life of its own, honestly. Yeah, that's, that's pretty wild. You, you get introduced to it your junior year you start having some pretty good success right away. Um, so obviously you're a, you're a born natural at it, but obviously you work very hard. Um, you know, you, you have a, a big family. How many siblings do you have? I have seven brothers and five sisters. Wow. That, that's, that's gotta be interesting come holidays. Um, so you <laughs> had a sister that introduced you to wrestling there. Do you think there was a little bit of a sibling rivalry or something like that when you were kind of wrestling one another? I think more I think more so we push each other to like be the best that we can be. I remember once I had to wrestle her twice at a tournament. Uh or yeah, I had to wrestle her twice at a tournament. And the first time there wasn't much talking before, but the second time that we got on the mat at the same tournament, we were just like, you know what? We got to, let's get this. Like, we're both going to go hard, and whoever takes home the cake is going to take it home. And that's basically how all of our matches go. Um, we both have a love for wrestling, and we just want to be the best in ourselves and push. Yeah, that, that's awesome. And to have someone to be able to, you know, whether it's sparring, wrestling with, to kind of push each other, right? You know, you're, oh, yeah. you, you got that same DNA, that same drive, uh, you know, just that, just that uh, pushing one another is, that's awesome. And then you transitioned into col uh, you know, collegiate wrestling and had great success there. Maybe you want to talk a little bit about your experiences at that level and some of the, the amazing things that you've accomplished. Well, I like to think of just all of my wrestling as me just being a sponge to whatever environment I'm in. And when I definitely entered the college scene, I didn't know much about wrestling at all. So I really did depend on my coach Jackson, on coach Jackson at Missouri Baptist University to really like teach me the basics of wrestling, like how to properly take a shot, how to recover from a shot, mm -hmm. how to even um, defend properly and get into my golden technique, which is my laces. I love those things. He made me drill them every day. And now it shows on the mat. Every time I go on, my laces are like my key. So, yeah. How, I mean, I and mean, you, you going into the collegiate level, I mean, you really don't have that much experience when you, when yeah. you started. So how was that learning curve of, you know, starting out at the collegiate level? I mean, you, you had two years of experience, but you don't mm -hmm. have 10 years of experience, right? So 
how, how is that going against some of these other women that maybe have been doing this for a lot longer and you, you're kind of learning as you're going, right? They definitely had like a lot of tricks up their sleeves, if I have to say it like that. But the best thing that um, Coach Jackson did do for me since he realized that when he realized I was a sponge, which is why he even recruited me to come there, uh, he just took me to a lot of tournaments. He had me get that like experience like, oh, this girl's been wrestling for 10 years, but she does the same moves over and over again. You just got to learn and adapt to that. And once you get past this, you can get past the same thing for the next girl who comes by and such. So that was basically our game plan for the first year of wrestling. And then the second year, it was more just about fine tuning the things that I knew I was good at. So, yes. How, how has it been from, you know, the first collegiate match to now of mid wrestle, mid match of breaking down your opponent and seeing you know, seeing what's happening in real time and making those in-match adjustments. Like, do you, can you tell right now that you are on a whole nother level than what oh, you, yeah. Yeah. So I like to think of it as I, I'm always an overthinker. I overthink in my matches and you can see it on my face every time in the match. You'll see me like putzing the belt in my brain. And my coaches always tell me to get out of my head, but it works for me. But definitely on my first collegiate match, it was definitely like, uh, oh, she just did this move. I can't wait to get back to learn to learn how to defend it and this, that, and the other, because I was just so new and green. Mm. And now I've experienced so many different types of um, wrestling, fighting styles, this, that, and the other, that now it's more or less just timing. Like, what time do I want to take my shot? How do I want to set up my shot? And like how is she reacting to how I'm setting up my shot? And it's the going from a green phase to not knowing much to having this high wrestling IQ now is amazing. I love the growth that comes with it. So yeah. How, you know, and now that you're at the Olympic Training Center, you're, you're practicing on a daily basis with some of the best women in the world. How has that experience been of competing, you know, these are these are women that you are training with. There are going to be women that you're competing against. How, how is that experience of growing and also? Oh, I, I talked with Catherine uh, Shea, and I, what I thought was very interesting is how competitive it is within that that area, and then trying yeah. to not disguise, but you don't want to lay it on, you know, someone that you're you know you're competing against yeah. for in a month, right? So how, how do you handle that? Uh, I just have a little system that I do go by. Uh, I'm not, I'm not that, I'm not the biggest bully when it comes to going to get somebody in my weight class because I believe in myself. Mm -hmm. Whenever people, av I believe that whenever people avoid a certain opponent when they're out of campus and such, then they're really not just really trusting themselves in their ability to grow. That's when you have reached a plateau, and that's when wrestling gets boring for me. So I like the challenge of being able to adapt throughout the camp and then adapt once everything's over. And I'm, once we get to the competition, I'm a whole new wrestler. I have all this new technique under my belt. You only saw a small percentage of me at that one week, two week camp. So right. it's really, so it's really just about how much confidence I have in myself to go out and do those things. And plus my training partners usually are not within my weight class. I usually go with a training partner who is um, above my weight class so I can get like that brute force feeling mm -hmm. or I go with somebody who's below my weight class so I can get that um re like reaction time because they're yeah. so fast than you but it's never really about um if oh I'm not gonna wrestle this girl if they're in my weight class because I I really just don't care it's all about the growth for me I I find that fascinating just because I think you have such a different perspective than some of these women that have been doing it for so long like you mm -hmm. Like you, you mentioned the sponge aspect of it, right? And you're, you're not green to the sport by no means, but you're still relatively new to the sport in comparison to other women. And what I find so fascinating is that mentality of saying, no, I don't care. I'll, I'll train with you. I'll, I'll wrestle you because you're just absorbing all of that knowledge, right? You know, these, these other women have been doing it for maybe longer, but, you know, it seems that you've leveled that learning curve a lot faster than maybe some others. And definitely to add to that, it's funny because when I go into these senior national team camps and such as a resident athlete at the Olympic Training Center, uh, I'm young. They're, everybody else in the room is at least 23 to like in their 30s now. And I'm over here, not even 21 yet. 
and and it like shows and they'll look at me and they'll be like oh yeah we forgot you're really young and I'm just like yeah yeah you're like I'm not even hitting my prime yet Harry watch out oh not there yet <laughs> <laughs> that that's awesome so you know what what is next for you? What's on the radar for you over the next, you know, 2020 has been a little bit interesting of a year. It's kind of thrown a wrench into a lot of different plans. Things have been pushed back, but what's on, what's some major goals that you're trying to accomplish here, maybe by the end of 2020 or into 2021? I definitely want to make the U23 world team. That okay. has been all in my head since I even knew what it was. And then I want to go on and make the senior national team, if not the senior world team, if that's possible. So, yes. And definitely just go out there and show the perseverance that I've had during this quarantine. It's been a really weird time trying to figure out things during this whole coronavirus pandemic. Mm -hmm. So really just going out there, showing myself, showing the world that there's nothing that can stop me. For those that don't know, I, I want to make sure we don't gloss over it, but you, you, your goals that you just outlined, maybe you can talk through of how you achieve those goals or how that selection process happens. Uh, for the senior national team? Yeah, or? yeah, but both of them, you know, like, because I, I want to make sure that people understand kind of what you have to go through and what that process looks like to achieve those goals, because those are, those are big accomplishments. So I want to make sure that they understand. So definitely it's more so about no matter – what type of training environment that I do have, I have to get out there and train every day. No matter if it's running, jumping rope, skipping, doing stance and motion all by myself, like keeping that rhythm and just keeping that mindset mentality that, oh, we're here to get work done. That's the first part and foremost. And then when it comes to actually like getting to the tournament, sign up for everything, Ty Mercury definitely does help me out with that. They'll be on my hind about, oh, what weight class are you going? Oh, what do you, um, which coaches do you want in your corner, this, down the other? And that's, I'm so lucky to have them in my corner to actually be able to cover that for me without me having to really stress about paying for tournaments anymore. And then finally, when it comes to the senior national tournament and that U23 tournament, just be ready. Just be mm -hmm. ready to fight it out. I expect to have five matches. Um, and that includes the two finals matches um, at, the end of the, at the end of the tournaments. So, yeah. So that's just basically my process leading up to both of them. I believe they do. I believe they will have um, some type of quarantining type thing going on, just to make sure nobody's getting sick and nobody's gonna go home sick. Right. So, really, what I'm looking forward to in this next month and month and a half. Well, that, that's that's exciting. Uh, I can't wait to see how it all shakes out. You know, with your career, with what you have planned, uh, you have a lot of really exciting things coming your way. Um, you know, the, that should be your nickname. You should be the sponge. Like, that's what we should be. That's what we should be calling you because every, every match, every tournament, you know, you're learning something new and getting better. Um, you know, not only being such a great wrestler, but you have things outside of wrestling as well. Maybe we could talk a little bit about the apparel uh, that you started, the lockdown apparel, and some of the really cool things that you're doing with it that maybe others don't know about. So I started this company, Lockdown Apparel, my senior year of high school. I was trying to pay for a really big tournaments like um, Body Bar, which is what they used to call it back in the day. Now it's like junior, the junior team nationals and such. And it used to cost me about like $2,000 for the whole process to get to that finals match. From me having to qualify at, for me having to qualify at an open, so then I could even go to the nationals and everything and all the travel expenses. Yeah, it was pretty costly, and I'm not saying that my family doesn't have money, but at the same time, I don't want to burden them with anything. I like to work for everything that I really want in life. So we started this whole clothing company, and it's really, like, gear designed for helping people make weight, run hard, stuff like that. So our... So we have sweaters and stuff and such. But now that I'm sponsored by Tiny Mercury and all my tournaments are really like just covered, especially in the important ones and the expensive ones. Now I really converted the clothing company into being just like a charity organization. All the money that people spend on getting these clothes, sweaters, leggings, really goes to um, projects and events that I have going on back in Lancaster, California. And one of those projects and events that I do do annually is the Christmas toy drive with a local organization called BNH Sports Academy. And basically what they do is that 
we'll go out to local hospitals with Christmas presents, toys, um, and we'll just go and give them to the kids who have to spend their Christmas day in the hospital. And that's basically one of the things we do. We also host like cookouts and just celebrations for the local people back in um, the Antelope Valley. And that's actually what we did right before quarantine started. And we were just like, okay, and we're going to shut down all the events that we, we had planned for the summer, but we are just going to allocate all the rest of that too when everything opens up. That, that's fantastic. You're doing some amazing things. And, uh, you know, I, I'll put your description, uh, Lock Apparel, in the, uh, Lock Apparel in the description and all of your information so people can check that out. Uh, donate. That's, that's awesome. Go buy a sweater. Yeah. Um, <laughs> What I want to ask you a little bit outside of wrestling, you as a person, what do you enjoy? Obviously, you love wrestling, you love training, but if you're not training, you're not wrestling. COVID has opened some opportunities for people to try different things, explore different things. So I want to ask you uh, a non-wrestling question. So if people were to learn a little bit more about Diamond Guilford, what would they? What do you enjoy doing outside of the training and wrestling? Uh, okay. So there's three things I mainly revolve around. Okay. It's my, it's my schoolwork and it's my cultural learning. I grew up in Southern California and I am well versed in hearing Spanish and understanding it. And now I'm just trying to work on speaking it back so that I can have a full conversation. I'm also, um, half Native American. Well, I'm like a quarter Native American and <laughs> I've lately been learning with my family um, the Choctaw language. So that's like, those are the main things I really do do outside of wrestling is just basically focus on my schoolwork and just try to grow in like the understanding of my cultures. 